Mic check, mic check. Bass, bass. Yeah, sounds good. Cue Steve. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? A friend gave me a piece of shotgun barrel, so when I found steel birdshot in bulk, you know it's time for some canister Damascus. There's no reason that these pellets would be stainless, so they should weld up nice with 1084 powdered steel. That being said, I don't know if they come greased or coated with something, so let's soak them in some acetone and get them cleaned up. You have to get the right ratio of shot to powder. You don't want any gaps in the billet without bird shot, but you have to have enough powder to fill every little nook and cranny. So as you can see when we tap this down, there's a lot of little tiny spaces to fill and that powder just gets eaten up. So if we didn't get it uh, filled with enough powder, that's going to come back to bite me. So after welding some ends on there, we're going to bring the canister up to forge welding temps and start hammering. I'm going to hammer it on two sides, so I'll get it squared up, and once it's squared up, I'm going to come back and hammer the corners and make it round again, basically, so that I've really hit it from every possible angle and compressed it as much as possible. The one exception being lengthwise. I obviously can't compress it lengthwise, and that could be an issue too. This barrel could be 0.4% carbon, which would be a passable but not great uh, knife steel. I didn't really spark test it because the plan is actually going to be to grind the barrel part away on the cutting edge and rely on the 1084 powdered steel in birdshot core. And you're saying, wait, what type of steel is birdshot? It can't possibly make a good blade. And you're probably right. It's, it's likely some sort of mild steel. But don't you worry, I've got plans for getting some extra carbon into the edge. The moment of truth. Did we forge weld this or is a bunch of powder and birdshot going to run out over the ground? Looks like we did it. So like I talked about, we're going to grind away the barrel on our blade side and then hammer out the knife after that. You can uh, see after we etch it that we've ground away the barrel entirely and that's what we're after. Watch this. That's after etching. Let's hammer out a knife. I'm going to point it first so we'll hammer in a point and then we're going to banana the knife or curve it towards the cutting edge. Hammer in the bevel and it'll straighten back out and after that, I'll go in and attack the handle area and shape up a nice simple grip. So let's go back to the concept of adding carbon. Remember, if we have mild steel, there's not enough carbon in it to really harden appropriately for a knife edge. So when I say that that birdshot might be mild steel, that's a problem. If it comprises any part of the cutting edge, it's going to be very soft and lose its edge very quickly. It may not even be sharpenable. So we're going to carburize it and add some carbon and try to bring the carbon content up to something that's more usable as a knife edge. It might. Uh, get harder and uh, stay sharp longer.
Next is to the grinder. We'll clean up the profile and then grind down the sides. And I'm actually going to start to put in a rough bevel. The goal here is to get the edge down to about a millimeter because when we carburize it in our sodium carbonate slash charcoal mixture, we can expect the carbon to penetrate about 1.5, 1 to 2 millimeters, somewhere in that range, into the steel. And if it's a thick piece of steel, that's all you get, about 1.5 millimeters. But if it's a thin piece and you're infusing it from three different sides, um, then you can really count on getting uh, good depth and good penetration of carbon into that bird shot, and into those pellets. And that's what I'm hoping for. So that's why we've ground down the edge thin to aid in uh, carburization of our cutting surface. All right, put the steel in the foil pouch, you dummy, and into the oven, 1800 degrees, for about an hour. You punch those buttons, Steve. You punch those buttons. It's not the boss of you. You're the boss. Punch those buttons. Yeah, that's right. Heat treating mystery steel is always a bit of a gamble. Sometimes I prefer in these cases to do a triple quench because proper optimal thermal cycling is basically not possible if you don't, if you don't know what the steel is. Um, so after normalizing this in the forge, uh, I'm going to triple quench it. So three separate quenches. The first is in this vegetable oil and it doesn't actually get hard enough. So for the second two quenches, I'm going to do it in Parks 50, which is a faster oil, and it does get hard in both of those quenches, which I think is a good sign. You know, if, if it requires a faster quenchant, the suggestion, just the suggestion, is that it might be higher in carbon and have fewer alloys. And so that would be good news to me, frankly, that it's got a bit of a higher carbon content. The skate's a file. So here I've got a J-Flex belt turned over the corner of this platen, and I'm going to clean up the plunge line after grinding away the bevels. It's a neat little trick. Since it's been hardened and I didn't drill it, I'm going to have to draw back the handle. I just I didn't want any extra spots for faults or cracks going into the quench. It turned out pretty cool. And the more I use zebra wood, the more I just like it. It's such a cool wood. I was so geeked out when I saw this sanding. Did you guys see those little dots? I'm going to shape up this handle a little more and then we'll etch it and get our final pattern out. As you see when we bring it out, it's dark along the edge and along the spine. Generally speaking, darker steels have higher carbon content and fewer alloys. So it's, um, in other words, I think we were successful. We put carbon where we wanted it. We put it along the edge and you don't see it along the sides because we ground that off uh, for the bevels. Remember it all it probably only went in about a millimeter and we ground that away to form the rest of our bevels. So that's why it's still on the spine. And it's right there on the edge where we wanted. So that's just super cool. I like that. Man, what a fun project. This was such a blast. I'm definitely going to be making more of these. You'll find this knife on eBay for 100% charity auction. Look in the description below for a link to that. It's not perfect. There's still a few issues, uh, namely those gaps that I was talking about trying to avoid. I'll show you. If you look right there, you can see some tiny little air pockets right at the tip. It doesn't affect the function that doesn't carry onto the blade area. It's not in a structurally important part of the knife, and it doesn't. It's really just on the surface. But at any rate, this was so much fun, guys. I had a blast. Tell me what you think. 
and I'll see you next time.